Hey, welcome to Brightworks. What are we doing today? We are going to do brakes on a 2018 Macan GTS. So, be able to get those cleaned up. But uh, we're going to do rotors and pads and sensors. So, the hardest part of the job, if you're watching a Macan channel, you already know this, or a Macan video, you already know this, is just getting the damn wheels off. I have no idea what Porsche was thinking, but uh, yeah, the dissimilar metal stuff is real. We'll end up putting some Molly Lube on there to make it easier for the next guy, but uh, yeah, we're off. So we've got one, two bolts, and we're gonna get those out, get this caliper off, and we'll probably set something up right here to be able to sit that caliper on. So let me get started with that and we'll show you along. All right, so first things first, getting these guys loose so we ended up using a, uh, a 14 triple square on a three foot breaker bar top one no problem bottom one thought about it but all's well that ends well and then i believe this is a t30 so this is your set screw for your rotor right so you got to make sure you clean out the hole and that this thing fits all the way down and what I did was as I was taking the wheels off I put like one drop of uh, uh, penetrating lubricant I think I used 656 Gibbs oil will work too like one drop just to sit there for a little while so right now we've got these three broken loose and we're gonna get that guy off and uh, after we do that we'll put a little uh, thing here for him to be able to sit on before we get that out, I want to show you one more thing. One day, maybe I will get a body cam. So, um, if we start from this side, it'll make more sense. Over here, you've got your brake sensor line, right? Now, that sensor line is going to snake along the back up here. And you can see that it's routed. It sits underneath the bleeder cap, right? Okay, so we know that. That's good. And then it comes around and it sits in this metal bracket. Now, inside that metal bracket, you can actually twist that thing. So this top piece where the little triangle thing is here, that's just a notch for it to kind of sit in. And what you have to do is you have to pull back a little bit and then you can twist it out of the way. Hang on, bear with me. You may have to go get a screwdriver. Maybe not. There we go. Okay, so we're twisting it sideways. Right, so that little notch, you don't have to break anything. So as this guy twists, he comes out, right? Now you come around the other side and here's your connector, which I had already unclipped, but it's your typical, you know, pull back here and it slides off. So now we can take this line, oops, and if we take the bleeder cap cover off, which sounds easy when you say it fast oh i'm gonna have to get something to do that because that does not want to come off but essentially what we've done now is we've freed up our sensor wire and we're going to replace these so that snakes through comes through here plugs into the pad there but uh yeah i wanted to show you that before we got too far in the game all right that took a minute um if you look here you can see i beat the hell out of that rotor to get it off but we've cleaned up the surfaces. I have no idea why it was so insistent, but uh, yeah, we got it off success. And we've got our new rotor stamped left, plus we've checked the veins on it to make sure that it matches what we're taking off. So just a little wire brush, some brake clean, some time, we got that guy cleaned up. So we're gonna get this rotor back on. So just before I put the rotor back on, um, this stuff, I've talked about it in other videos. Typically, I put it between the uh, uh, the ring, concentric ring, and the wheel, and then the face of the rotor and the wheel. But in this case, this guy was on there so horribly uh, that uh, you, can, you can almost see through it. Very, very thin coat. Very, very thin coat. Not a lot. Um, from what I hear, this stuff's getting harder and harder to get. So not only do you not want to use a lot of it, but uh, this is nickel-based, very expensive stuff, same stuff you use on the center locks. 
but it's, uh, it's also good around brake areas. So if we overused it, it shouldn't foul the rotors and the pads, but we wanted to make sure we put a very thin coat so that it doesn't drip off and foul our braking surface. All right, now we are gonna get the rotor back on. So when I first saw this tool being used by somebody, I thought it was a gimmick. And then I said, well, wait a minute, these are six pot calipers, right? Three pistons on each side. Almost no way to expand those evenly. So this little tool, once you get, you do have to, the way that these are set up and the, the way that this uh, tool is, you have to spread these manually a little bit. So you use a, a handle of a, a wooden handle or a wooden uh, post, you get them spread out a little bit. But then what this guy is going to do is he's going to spread them all the way out, push those pistons back in. Now, one of the things that I did, you can see the hood's open. One of the things I did was I sucked a little bit of brake fluid out of the reservoir so that we don't overflow the reservoir. Remember, we're pushing fluid back into the system right now. So, but that's it. You just keep doing that until those pads, and there you go. They're expanded out all the way. And we switch the thing up. Oops. I'm going to use two hands for this, but we switch it up, shrink it up a little bit, pull those pads out, and we'll go get the new ones. All right, quick discussion on front caliper bolts. Now, um, Macans have brought a lot of new people to Porsche. Uh, so we learned this a long time ago on the Cayennes and the 996 turbos. And these, uh, usually people will change these out for studs if they're doing a lot of brake pad changes because it's very easy to strip the threads that are in the hub. So you'll notice what I've done is I've just put those in by hand, right? Everything started by hand, no power tools, no air tools, but I got new ones to put in here because the torque to yield discussion on these, um, not sure, 22 foot pounds plus 90 degree turn. So that should be like 130 some odd foot pounds. It's an M14 bolt, but it is shouldered right so it is shouldered so i don't know but what what's weird is there's no uh uh what do you call that stuff uh, loctite on there so we're going to actually add some blue loctite and then we'll swap these out one by one run them down by hand and then torque them by hand uh, because if you strip out the threads that are in the hub now you got a very very long day in front of you so that's what we are uh, we're going to get on right now all right we got those torqued up see some torque stripe I love my first gen snap-on torque wrench. It said 90, uh, 90 degrees was around 134 foot-pounds, so somewhere around there. All right, we're gonna keep going. All right, so one last silly thing, you'll see I'm over now on the passenger side, um, that caught me on both sides, so I figured I'd put it in the video, is when you're routing the brake sensor, right? So we know the thick side goes towards the rotor. But when you're routing it, you have to be inside this brake hose here. If you don't route your wire inside the brake hose and you route it around the outside, it, it doesn't have enough service length to fit up under that clip. And I would say that is probably the only trick. The rest of it is just kind of make your way through and take your time, go slow. But uh, now we're off to the back brake. All right, for the rear brakes, Every Macan is the same. So what I'm using is iCarsoft and I've got us into the EPB and we're gonna move to the installation position and we should hear it. There we go. You can hear that thing moving out of the way. So now what that means is that we'll be able to retract the piston so that we can put the pads in. So we are still running a routine application complete F2 OK. So when we're done, we'll come back and we'll put the end assembly position. So for now, we're just going to turn the car off and we're going to shut the door. And I got to tell you, I hate these air suspension cars. It seems like even though you put them in, you tell them not to. Every time you open the door, you hear the damn uh, pump come on. It scares the crap out of me because so many people have ruined cars not, not turning the pump off. But 
front brakes, we're getting on the rear. All right, so when you're doing the rears, you're gonna actually need two wrenches. So the bolt that holds the caliper onto the bracket is a 13. So that's actually what you're gonna be loosening, right? So you put your 13 on there. Problem is, if you just use your 13, the whole thing slides. So there's an inner uh, flats here that are 15 millimeters. Let's double check that. Yep, 15 millimeters. And then now if I turn it, uh, I can counter hold my 15 and I'll actually be able to get that bolt to release. So you can imagine that's a two hand operation. So that's what we're gonna do. So I do believe we have found our smoking gun. So you can kind of see how much pad is not there anymore. But more importantly, since it was kind of coming on and going off the brake sensor anyway, uh, on the right side is the new one. On the left side is the old one. And we didn't find a smoking gun on the front, but right here you can see where it's worn through the wire a little bit. And that might just have been enough to uh, set off the, uh, the parking brake. Or not the parking brake, I'm sorry, the brake sensor. So not completely gone through, but uh, definitely wore through the sheath of the wire. So quite possibly that was our smoking gun. And now we're going to get on with uh, with reassembling this. So if you've ever done your own brakes, you know that clips are a varying level of interesting. These are just one gigantic clip and the new ones come in the box. So not necessarily anything wrong with those, but I've got a brand new clean one here. So I'll show you how it fits in, but I'm going to clean all of this crap before I set it in. And then the biggest thing is just make sure it's centered because you don't want it rubbing on the or you don't want it rubbing on the rotor, All right? So if you look at this one, we got about the same air gap on either side. Now we're going to put a new fresh rotor on here too, so we may end up having to reset where those are in the middle. <coughs> but brake dust. Um, but we're going to clean this stuff up with a toothbrush and some brake clean before we put these guys in. All right, same deal here on the rear rotors. Apparently somebody showed up to show off their stereo system outside, but at least it's not terrible music. So one of the neat things was uh, um, I had previously been taking this off and I saw on one of the Macan forums, oh no, you can get it off without taking the, uh, the caliper mount off. So I figured, oh, I'll give it a try. Yes, as a matter of fact. So we're gonna get this cleaned up, same way we got the other ones cleaned up. But um, yeah. Kind of, kind of awesome that you don't have to take this off. I guess this is now short enough, um, and there's no e-brake back here, right? The e-brake's built into the uh, to the caliper body, so kind of, kind of awesome. Didn't know that. Now I know the trick, I, and I don't think it saves you a bunch of time. I mean, it's two bolts, but uh, hey, it was a neat thing that I saw, tried, figured I'd share it with you guys. Oh, and getting this rotor off was almost as much of a bear as getting the front one off. Um, so if you're doing this yourself, you may want to get a rotor puller um, or, and they're not expensive. I think they're like a hundred bucks on, on Amazon or something like that. Um, or you can fashion something that might work, but it's basically a big two job puller. So we'll get on with it. All right. I got to put a caveat on getting the rotor back on. Remember this rotor is a lot thicker than the one we just took off. Um, you can't do it with the clips. That extra fraction of a millimeter where these clips hang over won't let you do it. So if you leave the clips off, then you can then you can do that trick. But uh, <laughs> yeah, so hopefully you're not holding a 15 pound rotor while you're, uh, while you're trying to figure out that game. All right, we're gonna keep going now. Yeah, I would say definitely got some value out of those pads but here's how they clean up all right the only little trick that i will leave you with on these rear brakes this top bolt right the one closest to the sky versus the one closest to the ground has a little bell on it so that bell is probably for reducing the harmonics and the and the squeals and all of that stuff so make sure you put the bell back on the top and when you take this bolt out this bracket will fall off but it's got a locating uh, uh notch so the bracket will go back in and then you can you can put your uh, your brake uh, uh, sensor wire back in. So these sensor wires also, this will not fit through the Copta caliper. 
So you need to load this guy. Let me see if I can grab the old one. You need to load this guy through here and then connect him to the pad, right? So not a big deal, but if you try to put him on the pad and then you try to run this up through the hole, you see how it just, it will not fit through that hole. No big deal, but um, if you're, like I said, if you're giving this a go, uh, just a couple little tips and tricks. So we'll get the other side all done and then we'll get on to bleeding some brakes. All right, we got our back brakes all done. And um, I don't know if I gave you guys the torque value. The two bolts, they're 13 millimeter heads, 26 foot pounds with a little bit of blue Loctite. So what we're gonna do now is take this guy out of assembly position. So we're gonna end assembly position. Mission on. Communicating. F2. All right, well, let's see what it says. It says still running, so it's still thinking. There we go, application complete. All right, awesome. Okay, so now we're gonna go bleed the brakes. All right, I know you didn't come here for basic brake bleeding tips, Macan specific stuff, but check this out. So take my flashlight, I shine it down. You see this little triangle cutout right here? That allows you, if you look in there, there's little lines. And you can see right now we're a little bit above the max line, which is perfectly okay uh, because we still have this guy to bleed. So it's our last one. I'll bring you along for the ride. All right, so we got the great debate over, do you do the outer first? Do you do the inner first? There's different reasons that people have. But what I did was I called Brembo years ago and I said, well, what do you do? And the thought process is do the inner first so you don't drag any of the dirty stuff into the outer, right? So what we're gonna do, I'm gonna 11 millimeter wrench and a tube so we don't make a total mess. And if you get brake uh, fluid on your calipers, you will streak them. So we're gonna take our bleeder, we're gonna open it up and we've got about 20 PSI on the head, very low. So that's why it comes out slow. And we're just watching it, no bubbles, nothing. Everything looks clean. Now, the other trick is, if you're not sure if you wanna do the inner or outer first, if you do them both twice, you're good. All right, so that's what I do to all of them. I do them twice. And this is actually the second time around, but We'll do this one twice, get my arm out of the way. And, oops, just trying to keep from making a mess here. There we go. So now we've done both the inner and the outer, and then just for good measure, we're gonna do both of them again. But because I don't wanna risk the paint job, I'm gonna hit it with a little brake clean to dilute the brake fluid. And hit this back one one more time. Open the bleeder up. Usually about a 90 degree turn is enough. If it takes you more than 90, it means you need to pull the bleeder and clean it. Because there's something blocking it and that does happen. All right, this guy snug down just a touch. And we got nice clean fluid coming through the tube. So we are in good shape. No air bubbles, nothing like that pull our guy off and then our last step will be uh, well we'll use a little brake clean but then what we'll also do is uh, go around and put a little coat of ceramic wax on each caliper just to try to keep them in as good a shape as they're in and remember this is the one where you now need to grab this line and loop it 
so that it gets stuck in between the bleed cover and the bleeder. So there we go. We got it. So last thing we'll do, I'll take you for the test drive once we get the wheels and stuff back on and uh, get a little bit of wax on each one of these calipers. All right. Now, we don't want to thermally shock the brakes, so we get up to about 20, and then we're just going to drag the brakes a little bit, make sure they're working. Yep, they're working good. And very good, actually. All right, so we will pause you until we do our fun runs. Okay, we'll let this guy go. We already did our... 30 and our 50 or our 40 we're into our 50 outstanding never coming to a total complete stop all right this little lady has some fresh shoes or pads and rotors and boy this thing stops fantastic hey thanks for watching Check us out at brightworks.com. Have a fantastic day.